Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to go over a question again from one of the UK syllabus papers from October 2019. This is the uh, GCE um, A to A level paper. Um, pure pa the paper two. They have two papers: paper one and paper two for A level. Um, and then they have the statistics paper and the mechanics paper. But uh, this is the paper two. It contains everything from AS all the way to A2 because they take one exam for you know the whole thing in one go basically that's uh, how they have their their linear system they don't have a modular system so this question relates to what we're taking in international a level maths this relates to p2 sequences series sigma notation now a lot of students will look at something like this and they will get frightened they'll think what what is this you know it's but it, actually it's not very difficult um, it's actually quite easy what they're asking us is to find the value of, and this symbol means the sum of, sigma, the sum of, capital sigma is a Greek letter of the alphabet, and all it means is the sum of. All of the numbers that come out, when you replace this R with first four, and then five, and then six, and then seven, all the way to infinity, okay? When you replace this R with all those numbers, all the way till infinity. Okay, what's the sum of all those numbers? So basically what we have here, uh, what we can do here for um, in Sigma, what will make this a bit easier for us to kind of sort this out is, what we can do is if you have um, the sum of a constant times some sort of expression where you have to put some values in, you can take the constant on the outside. So you have A times the sum of whatever that expression is. So what I can do here is I can write this as 20 times sigma, the sum of, 1 over 2 to the power of r, from r equals 4 to 1 to infinity. That's one, th that's one thing I could do. So now I can concentrate on this part here. What does this mean? Now how we can concentrate on what this means, basically, so we'll have 20 times, I'll just, I'll just write it out. What it means is basically we've got to first put 4 into this expression and that gives us a half to the power of 4. I'll leave it in terms of the power f powers for now. That will help us to work out a few things we might need. And then I'm going to replace the r with 5 and I add that to the previous term because I've got to find the sum of these terms. And then I keep going up by integers, by integer values, 6, until I get to infinity, which of course I can't get to, but so I'll write plus, 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 dot, 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 up to infinity. That's what we have to find. We have to find 20 times the sum of all of these terms. Now, how on earth are we going to find all of these terms? Well, what we can do is we can first work out what type of sequence or series is this. Okay. There's a little, there should be a little clue when you see this infinity. Uh, that you know, There's something that you've learned in series about infinity and uh, certain types of series. So it's, that should be bringing some sort of bells in your mind as you're doing the question. But basically, we can see that if I divide a term by the previous term, each time I'm going to get the same ratio. This is like a geometric series. A, a half to the power of 5 divided by a half to the power of 4 is a half. A half to the power of 6 divided by a half to the power of 5 is a half. So here we have a common, we have a sequence, and I'm going to just um, now just focus on what we have in here. I'm going to focus on what's inside here, all right, and then we'll multiply that by 20. Okay, so what we have here is a, a geometric um, series. The first term is a half to the power of 4, which will be 1 over, <coughs> 1 over 16, and the common ratio is a half. And we have to find the sum to infinity means the sum of infinite number of terms. And we know that the sum to infinity of a geometric series is given by a simple formula, which is in your formula book, which is A over 1 minus R. We don't need to even need to go into that and um, into the derivation of this. And that's valid as long as the, the value of the common ratio, its, it's magnitude is less than 1. Okay, which it is. All right, so now... We know that A is basically 1 over 16, and R is a half. So the sum to infinity will simply be equal to 1 over 16 divided by 
1 minus a half, which is a half. So it's 1 over 16 divided by 1 over 2, which is 1 over 16 times 2 over 1, which is 1 eighth. Okay, so our sum, our sum, okay, from r equals 4 to infinity of 20 times a half to the power of r is going to be 20 times 1 over 8. Okay, so 4 goes into that 5 times, into that 2 times. So it's 5 over 2. So the sum of all those numbers is going to be 2.5. Okay, so there's our answer, 2.5. That's the sum of all of those numbers. And you are going to ask yourself, how can you have an infinite number of terms and they only add up to 2.5? Well, because we're raising something which is less than 1 to a higher and higher power each time, what you're going to be adding to this number is something so small that it's going to be insignificant. So, for example, if I raise, for example, a half, and I don't know if the calculator will even accept this, but let's see. If I raise a half to the power of, say, 50, it might even give me a math error. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a number that's so small, it's going to be 0 0.0000000, like 16. It's going 16 decimal places back. So you're not going to be affecting this the value of this number very much. So the, the further, higher and higher the power goes, the, the, you know, the, the smaller and smaller that you're adding to the numbers, so it's going to become something insignificant. So this will basically go towards 2.5. Anytime you have a common ratio, which is less than 1, the sum to infinity will exist. In this case, the sum to infinity is 2.5. So basically, this is just a flashy way of them telling you to find the sum to infinity of this geometric series. They could have said, find the sum to infinity of this series. But they've just written it in this form. That's all. Okay, and the first term was 20 times half to the power of 4. And the last term, you know, of course, is an infinite number of terms. So it's just a flashy way of saying, or a scary way of saying, find the sum to infinity. That's all it is. So nothing to be afraid of at all. And if you want to make sure that you've done the right thing, what you could do, I guess, I don't know, I think this would work. Because I don't think you can put infinity in here. But some people, they like to use this. So you can use this. Of course, this won't help you unless you have um you know uh, you know you know what you're doing this is just this, this is just to check your answer if you just put the answer in and uh, you know if you just write down 2.5 as your answer then it won't help you i've got to put this in another bracket i think because i've got to raise it to the power of n so i'll put it bracket within the bracket um <clears throat> to the power of so what i'm going to do is i'll put really big power like maybe a thousand Okay, and then I'll put my limits in from 4. No, no, not I want to I have to put here x, sorry. This is going to be the power of x. And here I'm going to put from x equals, and there, here I'll put a really big number like 1,000. And let's see what it gives us. Oh, it's taking its time. Why is it taking its time? What's happened? Have I <laughs> crashed the, the calculator? Where's it gone? What have I done to it? It couldn't take the calculation. Oh, it's giving us 1 over 8. Ah, what did I forget? That's what we got, remember? I forgot to put the 20 times. Okay, let's do it again. Boom. Let's see how long it takes this time. Taking its time again. Well, it's 20 times 1 over 8. That's what we got, right? 20 times 1 over 8, because we had to multiply that. We got 1 over 8 when we did that, and we did 20 times that. 5 over 2, which is 2.5. Yeah. So all you have to do is put a really large number in there. It, it, it takes a bit of time here to, to work it out, but you end up with the answer. So you can put a really large number in there, and then see if it gives you the same answer to be sure that you've done the right thing. That's how you can check your calculator. If you just put 2.5 down here, you won't get any marks, okay? because they know, they know that you can do that. They know you can do that in your calculator. That's just as a check. If you don't have a mark scheme, you're doing the exam, you don't know if you're right or wrong, you can check. Okay, so that's a eight part one. And part two, it says, now here, this is a weird one. It's got logarithms mixed with sigma notation. It says, show that the sum of all the terms you get when you uh, substitute one into this expression, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, all the way up to 48, and you add them all together, you end up with two. That's what it's basically telling you to do. So what I would suggest we do here is we, we should generate a few terms. 
So when you put n equals 1 in here, we'll have log to the base 5 of, if you put 1 here, that's going to be 3 over 2. Okay, plus, and we have log to the base 5. When you put n equals 2 in here, we'll have 4 over 3. You can see a pattern forming here. Plus, log to the base 5 of, the next term is going to be, you put 3 in here, that's 5 over 4. So you can see that there's a little pattern forming here. Log to the base 5 of 6 over 5. Plus, dot, 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 all the way till the end. I'm going to put the last two terms. So when I put 48, that's going to be, when I put 47, it will be log to the base 5 of 49 over 48. Plus, and the last term will be log to the base 5 of, if I add 2 to that, that will be 50 over 49. So you've got to have all those terms in between. They will follow this pattern. Now, with the laws of logarithms, when you have log to the same base of a number plus log to the same base of another number, we can combine them by multiplication. This is log to the base A of B times C. So I can combine all of these together because they're all added together as log to the base 5 of, then I have 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times 5 over 4 times 6 over 5 times all the way up to 49 over 48 times 50 over 49. Now, what we'll notice here is a pattern. This 3 is going to cancel with this 3. And this 4 will cancel with this 4. And this 5 will cancel with this 5. And this 6 will cancel with the 6 over here. And the 7 with the 7 over here. And all the way up to here, you'll have the 48 over here cancel with the 48 over here. The 47 over here cancel with the 47 over here. The 49 with the 49. That 50 won't cancel with anything. And that 2 won't cancel with anything. So all of these will cancel out. You'll be left with 1s here. So you have 1 over 2 times 50 over 1. So all of that will become log to the base 5 of a half times 50, which is 25. So log to the base 5 of 25, which we know is basically 2, because this is like 5 squared. This means 5 to the power of 2 equals 25. You can prove it by, by writing this as log to the base 5 of, you could say, 5 squared, and using the power law, 2 times log to the base 5 of 5, and log to the base of something of itself is 1, that's going to give you 2 times 1, which is 2. So we've proved it. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, it looks a bit difficult. How are you going to prove that? There's probably other ways of doing it as well. Maybe you could have split this up into log to the base 5 of n plus 2 times, uh, minus n minus log to the base 5 of n plus, sorry, log to the base 5 of n plus 2, close bracket, minus, log to the base 5 of n plus 1, and we could have maybe done it that way. I think this way probably is the more logical way, but there might be other ways of doing it, but we've done it, we've proved or showed that this is equal to 2. Okay, and there's the answer to question number 8, part 2, from this paper, October 2018, from the A-level paper. Again, it looks a bit scary to, you know, at first sight, but just remember this is just... A Greek symbol that's there to just mean the sum of, and the last part it just means the sum to infinity of what well, geometric series. So, there's the answer to question number eight from October the 2019. I hope that was helpful for you, especially for you IL students taking your P2 exam soon. Um, uh, you know, this is a type of question where maybe they're having this new type of style, which um, it's good for you to get used to. Other questions from this particular paper, if I go to get around to answering them, will be in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. In this region, you'll find other questions to do with sequences and series from P2 for the International A-Level. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And from here, you can watch a video. If you click on that video, it will tell you how to use my channel to find uh, that what you need efficiently, all the different playlists and stuff. So thank you for watching and see you soon.